All right, so now we're gonna be diving into work and energy. And technically, everything in physics can be solved with kinematics and forces. Those are the two things that you put together, you have enough sufficient mathematical skill, any physics problem can technically be solved with forces and kinematics. However, there's a lot of more convenient, easier tools. A lot of things that we do from here on out will be to analyze situations that it is easier if we introduce additional concepts. Okay, and so one of these things is work and energy, and it will allow us to solve problems far more easily than if we attempted to try to use forces and kinematics together, okay? So the, the kinematics of forces can require a great deal of math, and so the concept of work and energy is, can be used in those situations. And so let's, let's talk about it, and I always try to derive these for you so that you understand that it is all coming from our source of Newton's law. So if we look at F net equals MA, Okay, this F net equals MA part portion right here. And think about this acceleration as thinking as the displacement, the change in velocity. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, not that one. If we think about our kinematic equations, we have this kinematic equation. This is equal to V naught squared plus 2A delta X. And if we solve for the acceleration here, we'll divide it by 2 times delta X. We'll solve for the acceleration in that expression. And then we can plug that into here. So it'll equal m times v squared minus v naught squared over 2 delta x. Now, I'm being a little bit simplistic in it because we're just keeping it to algebra-based. Technically, these are vectors. Vector operations are a little bit more complicated, um, but we're going we're gonna to do this nonetheless. And then we're going to move this delta x up to here. And then we'll, we'll, write, we'll distribute the m, and then we'll just write it as 1 half, okay, dividing by 2, and then distribute the m to both of these be one half mv squared minus one half mv zero squared. Okay, so this is this is something that we derive and we have to describe what is this telling us? Now the right side, eventually we're gonna talk about this in a later lesson. This is called the change in energy because you can see there's a difference between uh, some this one half mv squared. So this is to be discussed later. So we're not gonna talk about that right now. We're gonna be focused on this part here, this f times the displacement. And that's where this idea comes from. But our core equation for unit three is gonna be this work is the change in energy. So let's study this, this portion right here. What does this f delta x mean? How do we go about computing it? Because one of the things you have to keep in mind is these are both vector quantities. And we have not talked about what does it mean to multiply two vectors. Okay, and rather than teaching you the entire mathematical theory that you might learn in AP Physics C, or you would learn in a multi multivariable calculus class, I don't wanna to take too much of your time to focus on this. We're just going to simplify how is it that we multiply these two vectors and what kind of multiplication are we talking about here? So the kind of multiplication we're talking about, this work is not a vector quantity. We multiply two vectors. And if you want to know, this is called a dot product in terms of vector notation. We multiply these two vectors, but we get a scalar, which is a really interesting fact. And one of the reasons that work in energy is so useful is because scalars are easier to deal with than vectors, okay? So this quantity, we got to multiply, but these are both vectors here. So how do we multiply these two vectors? How do we multiply them to get a scalar quantity? And so this is a mathematical thing we're going to do. We're not going to do it in the rigorous, if you guys have done vector calculus or you know what dot products are, we're not going to handle it in such a rigid mathematical fashion. I want to give you an intuition by how do we compute these things. So to compute this, you're going to take the component of force that is parallel to the displacement and multiply the magnitudes together. Okay. Now, for example, if I have, let me give you just a quick example. If I have a force vector here, that's like 10. And let's say I have a displacement vector here, that's 20. And let's say this angle is, say, 10 degrees here. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to say, I want to take the component. I don't just multiply by 10 and 20. Oh, sorry, this is the displacement vector. Displacement is 20 here, 20 meters. And say this is, to calculate the work, I want to decompose the force vector to take the component that is parallel to the displacement. So we're going to do our decomposition, F cosine 10 degrees, and this would be F sine 10 degrees. Right, And then we're going to, j just our normal decomposition, and we're going to multiply those magnitudes. So the magnitude of the work would be F cosine 10 degrees times 20 here, times the displacement there. And this F you would replace with, of course, 10 newtons like that. 
you multiply their magnitudes, but only if they're pointing parallel to each other. Okay, and, and that can be a little confusing and you got to keep in mind because my derivation while highly algebraic, we are multiplying vectors because the real way to derive it does require using more advanced calculus to understand. Okay, now couple of rules on there. If the force component is in the opposite direction of the displacement, the work is negative. Okay, so that is to say, if you were to take a force vector this way and a displacement vector this way, then the work is going to be negative. Okay, so if it's the opposite direction, if the force is opposite the direction of displacement, this would be negative work. If the force component is in the same direction, they're both pointing in the same direction, then the work is positive. Okay, that's how the, that's the rules on how the scalars, this vector multiplication work. I'm just giving you the shortcut for those calculations. And if the force is perpendicular to the displacement, then there's no work at all. That means the component parallel is zero, then the work here would be zero as well. So just to be just to just to understand the rules for this calculation, if the force is in the same direction of the displacement, the work is positive. If it's opposite direction of the displacement, it's negative. If it's perpendicular, then zero. So huge part of our calculation is for us to be able to draw the free body diagrams correctly. Okay, so let's go through some examples and we talk about this. Suppose I drag a seven kilogram box with a rope seven, 40 degrees to the horizontal. Okay, so I have a, I'm applying a force here, right? This is a force I'm applying and that, that force is being applied at an angle of 40 degrees. You drag the rope a distance of 25 meters. So let's say I'm dragging it to the right, it's gonna travel 25 meters to the right here. The tension in the rope here is 30 newtons. Okay, 30 newtons. How much work is done by the rope? Okay, so here we have the displacement to the right. We're gonna draw our free body diagram. Well, we're gonna draw our force components, decompose them here, right? So this is gonna be 30 cosine 40 degrees. And then this is gonna be 30 sine 40 degrees. And then to calculate the work here, we're just going to say it's positive because they're both pointing the displacement is to the right and the force is to the right. So we're going to take our force component parallel to the displacement vector and multiply those two out like that. So that would be our work. Oh, I didn't talk about units. Units of work are in joules. Okay, so Newtons, you can think of it as it's Newton meters. Like in terms of units, you could say this is Newtons and then meters, but we use the unit joules here. I'll add those into the notes. Okay, so that's joules. It's J, if you J O U L E S. If you want to be famous for do something amazing in physics, you get units named after you. Okay, uh, how much work is done by the normal force? Well, we got to draw the normal force. The normal force is pointing upward here, right? Because it's touching the surface on the ground. The normal force is upwards. Notice how it's perpendicular to the displacement. So the work done by the normal force is going to be zero joules here. How much work is done by gravity? Well, gravity pulls downward at 7g, but you see it's perpendicular to the displacement. And so the work done by gravity is zero. Again, don't just look at, see a lot of people, a lot of mistakes they make is they just look at this. They just say F and delta X, and they just multiply the two numbers. They say like, well, this is 70, this is 25, do 75 to 25. No, you have to think about the directions of the vectors when you are calculating work. Right? The entire purpose of work calculations, you've got to understand the direction of all those vectors. We only multiply components parallel to the displacement vector. Okay. What happens if we're changing directions? There's scenarios where the object may change directions, and this is the power of it. So we want to th think about the work is broken up into tiny steps and evaluating if the work is positive, negative, or zero for that little step. And let me let me kind of explain where, there's, gonna, where there's, there's a couple of common examples we'll run into, but there might be other scenarios you gotta think about if the forces are changing during the motion. So for example, suppose an object slides down a ramp here. Let's draw a free body diagram of the object at two different points in time and identify what forces are positive, negative, or zero. So this block is sliding down this way, and we want to draw a free body diagram here. This is gravity, and then there's no, oh, there's, there's some friction. And then what we want to think about is there's a normal force perpendicular to that surface there. And then there's a friction parallel to the surface. Okay, like that. Now let's think about this one over here. This one's going to have gravity, but the normal force is going to look more like this because it's perpendicular to the surface right here. 
and then the friction would be parallel to the surface and perpendicular to the normal force like that. So that's what the free body diagrams look like at that point. Now, we got to think about the displacement vector. Now, I've always told you about the displacement being starting and ending, like we did with kinematics. But when we're doing the purposes of the work calculation, we're actually thinking about just in this small moment in time, not to say that, oh, we're starting here and we're ending here, and we draw this displacement vector. That isn't, that isn't the correct way to think about it in this instance for the purposes of work. We want to think about what is the work that's happening right at that exact moment, not the overall motion, but at that exact moment. That's that's core to the derivation of the work and energy equation. Okay, it's not because like displacement is a different term. It's just that the it does require you to think about it, what's happening moment by moment in time. So at this instantaneous moment, he's moving parallel to the ramp right there. Okay, at that moment, like that, like if you took one microsecond, it would just slide just a little bit, right? And it would be parallel to the surface. Okay, and so what you would say here, what forces, um, so the displacement's pointing this way. So in this scenario, the normal force doesn't do any work. So the work by the normal force equal, equal zero here. The frictional force is pointing opposite the direction of the displacement. So the work done by friction would be negative because you see the frictional force is opposing the motion, the displacement is this way, opposite directions, it's negative. Gravity would have a component, you would have technically have to decompose gravity into a component parallel, perpendicular and parallel to the displacement. So this part's not gonna do any work, but this component here, parallel to the displacement is pointing to the same direction. The work done by gravity is going to be positive in that scenario. Okay, let's look at this scenario here. Okay, so then, um, Again, think about the instantaneous time and the displacement here is there's a displacement happening right at that moment in time. Not over a long period of time, but just a one microsecond, how much does it shift? It shifts a little bit, right? It shifts a tiny amount there. Again, it's gonna be parallel to the surface is that motion, right? Because it's not going into the surface or popping off or flying off of the surface. It's just moving in the same direction as the surface. So that means it's, it's perpendicular to the normal force, so again, the normal force is gonna do zero, zero joules of work. Okay, friction's gonna be opposite the displacement, so the friction's gonna do negative work. And then gravity is still gonna have a component parallel, because if you think about drawing like this, you still have a component that's pointing in the same direction as the displacement, and so the work done by gravity is positive. Okay, so those are those are the those are the answers in that scenario. Now that's just one example of how you have to think about it, and this is an important skill because this is going to apply later on when we're thinking about using that change in energy portion, right, um, to solve problems. Let's look at this one. A ball is tied to a string attached to the ceiling. It's released and swings back and forth in a circular arc here, right? Draw a free body di diagram at different points here. So let's think about like like here. You have gravity and you have the tension force. Here you have gravity, you have a tension force, and over here you have gravity, and you have the tension force. Okay, and let's, for the sake of argument, let's just talk about the motion as it swings from here to here, okay? Like swinging back, it's gonna change because the displacement will be a little bit different, but let's just talk about the motion during this first arc. It's starting from the left and swinging down and going to the right. Now, which uh, so which forces are po so which forces are doing positive? This should say doing positive, negative work at that moment. So I I, re I didn't write that correctly. I'll fix that in the notes. Okay, so think about the motion here. At this moment in time, the 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 direction of the displacement is just the direction that it's moving in. So at this moment in time, it's moving tangential to this path here. And right here, it's gonna be moving displacement this way. And right here, the displacement technically will be zero, but like, let's say it's still moving upward a little bit, okay? Just for the sake of argument. Okay, let's say it's not quite at the maximum height. Let's say like it actually swings up to this point over here. Okay, so let's say we're grabbing it in the middle of the motion. Okay, so it's actually swinging from here all the way to here. So it's still moving up parallel to this circular arc, okay? So let's talk about the work done by each of them. Now, the, because it's parallel to the path and this tension force is radially part of this circle, we know that these are perpendicular right here. So the tension force is going to do zero, the work done by the tension force is gonna be zero the entire time because it's perpendicular the entire time. 
Now at this moment in time, the gravity, if I decompose the gravity into a component perpendicular to the displacement and parallel to the displacement, I'm gonna have a component that's parallel to the displacement pointing in the same direction. Here, the work done by gravity is greater than zero. Here, the gravity is perpendicular to the displacement. So the work done by gravity is gonna be zero, this part here. And then over here, if you decompose the gravity, it's pointing this way. See, the component parallel to the displacement is against the displacement, opposite direction. So here in this scenario, the work done by gravity is negative. So the work done by gravity is changing as it's moving based on the fact that the displacement is shifting. It's not that gravity has changed, it's the direction of the displacement vector has changed throughout the motion, and that affects the sign of whether the work is positive, negative, or zero, okay?